the athletes going to be brought out in front of the uh, crowds here now. And uh, the major names, of course, will be presented to us, as is uh, often the case. By the way, 50 athletes have broken 220 now, exactly, in the history of women's marathon running. Exactly 50 athletes. There are seven of them in this race who have broken uh, the 220 barrier. That is the benchmark of extreme elite racing. There is uh, Emma Bates to the right of picture. Very, Very strong, strong American, American squad, squad with uh, Sarah Hall, Bates and Kira D'Amato proudly uh, sporting those US colors. Raced you off at quarter past the hour. That's in about two minutes from now. And uh, as for the men's race yesterday, we will be uh, bringing forward, just before the gun, some of the main protagonists. Well, there in the white vest is Kira D'Amato, national record in January this year at the age of 37. D'Amato, that is uh, 2 hours, 19 minutes and 12 seconds. Did that down in Houston, Texas. D'Amato. Ruth Chepengetic, she's the defending champion, the Kenyan. Didn't finish the Olympic Games in Sapporo last year. She won Nagoya in March, though, in 2.17. She's in great shape. And our next athlete, who's 12th, the world half Lona Chemtaisel Petter, watch her, the Israeli former Kenyan, 33 now. She's a 2.17 performer as well. Fabulously consistent, and a 2.18 in Nagoya in March from her. Goitom Gebreslasi of Ethiopia. Goitom Gebreslasi. The athlete who came third in Tokyo. Back in March in uh, 2018, inspired by Tola's win yesterday. Will she be? I don't know. Maybe her teammate Becca they will be as well. The second fastest in the race this year with a 2.17 from her second place in Tokyo in March. It's her 24th marathon start, Becca to the right there. Very, very experienced indeed. So, a small but supremely talented field here of 41 starters. And Joan Benoit Samuelson, the inaugural Olympic champion back in 1984 in the women's marathon, is the official starter. Great to see Joni there. They are underway then here in Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. The sun came up just half an hour or so ago right behind them. From the east, of course, they are running in a westerly direction. They will pass in front of us here at the finish line in about 10 seconds time. And uh, then they will head, on the head out on the first of those three laps of exactly 14 kilometers. You will become familiar with that uh, circuit if you weren't with us for the men's coverage yesterday. But Mara, no pacemakers. This is a championship race, which is usually very, very different to the big city marathons where there are pacemakers who lead the athletes around for at least the first half and set up a nice steady tempo but a good fast tempo usually that's the idea this could be very very different yes no pacemaker so it depends entirely on which athletes want to uh, make the running up front as it were uh, three there are seven women in this field with pbs under 220 three of them from kenya and the defending champion ruth chetman get it you know easily came she's run 217 218 easily capable of very fast times and for for the athletes whose pbs are more like 222 23 or slower you know to, to run 217 is just beyond them so but yesterday in the men's marathon they set off at a relatively pedestrian pace it wasn't until after the first 5k that the, the running really got going uh, they still broke the championship record the cut the championship record for this women's race 220 57 uh, by former world record holder Paula Radcliffe of Great Britain. That has stood since 2005, Helsinki. Uh, but several of these women are well capable of beating that. And as we were saying earlier, really ideal conditions, not a breath of wind in the air and nice cool temperatures. Well, this is the longest discipline in the track and field program now. There is no longer a 50 kilometers walk. Later on in the week, there will be the 35 kilometer walks for the men and women. But. Uh, over this 42 kilometers, every single kilometer is uh, marked out, and we will be giving you splits for the kilometers and the 5k splits as well, as often as we can. But as soon as we get them, we'll pass them on to you as well. But uh, already the field splitting open pretty quickly with what two and a half minutes on the clock. And that suggests to me, Mara, that actually this first uh, 
kilometer or so is pretty quick. Now, 2.30 yeah. pace would be 3.33 per kilometer. So let's see what sort of splits do come up. Yeah, uh, the first athlete off that lead group is Charlotte Purdue, just out of shot. She has a PB of 2.23.26. Uh, so she already deciding not to go with that lead group. And one of the Japanese athletes is in that group. Very sad news for Japan. Two of their athletes have had to drop out after testing positive for COVID. That was Hitomi Niya uh, and Ichiyama, uh, their top scorer in the Olympics last year. So Mizuki Matsuda flies the flag for Japan. So already quite strung out in the women's marathon. All three Kenyans in that leading group, of course. Uh, all three Ethiopians as well. Now, I and, think... Uh, the uh, three Americans in there, Ethiopia, Kenya, USA, Great Britain represents in there too. And as they head off for Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard, and they will very shortly be head out, heading out onto the uh, Day Island Road, which was uh, a landfill area between 1963 and 1974. It apparently was uh, uh, issuing some rather uh, less than ideal, uh, shall we say, toxins a few years back. I think it has settled down now. They will run from that into Alton Baker Park. Now we have a 1K split, Tim, 318, which is inside 220 pace. So that would explain why uh, it's already a bit strung out and that is well beyond the capability of some of the athletes in that group. Jess Piasecki on the left of your screen there, 2.22, a personal best for her. 3.18, super fast. You can see yep. Chep and Gatchich there, right in the middle with the red name background. That is uh, to indicate she is the defending champion. But uh, looking strong, isn't she? Correa, Judith Jeptum Correa, the, perhaps the least known of the three Kenyans, but she is still a 2.19 athlete. And uh, one, two, three across the front. The uh, pattern of the race being laid down much, much more quickly than was the case in the men's race yesterday, where they went through halfway, and I think it was 6408. Yes, but it was that's a right. much more, a much more, um, let's say, cautious opening from the men yesterday. This uh, is, uh, should we say, aggressive running in the early minutes. So chasing Pat, Pia Secchi, the two Americans, Hall and Bates, two Mexicans, Nostote and Gesabwa, and the Ugandan Chemitai. Uh, and behind them, some 13 seconds or so behind them, is Mizuki Matsuda of Japan, running along with China's Zhang. And then another fifth, 20 seconds or so behind them is Charlotte Perdue in 18th place. Well, Ruth Trepan gets it to the uh, left of this group. Has raced quite a bit this year. She's had a couple of track 10,000s. She's had a, a road 10K back in uh, late May. She won Nagoya in March. Yeah, that Japanese marathon in 217. She was sixth in the uh, Kenyan Cross Country Championships. I like to see that. I like the fact that she has mixed up her racing this year. Bit of cross country, bit of track some road races as well and uh, while many marathon runners race very very sparingly maybe drop in one or two half marathons then a couple of marathons a year I like to see athletes who will race on a regular basis Do you remember the great old Steve Jones who was a world record holder back in the uh, 80s he used to uh, just do a lot of sort of 10k races and 10 mile races he built them into his training he'd, he'd sort of you know do do seven or eight miles, ten miles in the morning, go and do a race in the afternoon and then get his long run done on the, the Sunday the next day. Did you used to do that, Mara? Did you used to races as training sometimes? Yes, certainly did, and also tried to mix it up with cross-country a bit as well. Talking of cross-country, well do, the Eritrean in that group. She's had, She's got a pretty stellar CV in cross-country behind her. Four-time representative uh, at the World Cross-Country Championships. Uh, she also ran the, the marathon at the Daegu, sorry, Doha, World Championships three years ago, finishing 23rd there. Also the 10K at, at Beijing 2015, uh, World Championships 24th place for her there, the 32-year-old. Well, they've just negotiated the two, the sort of double roundabout on the south side of the Willamette River, this uh, pack of eight. And now they're uh, got a slight incline back up onto 
Main Street Bridge, the Willamette River, really glorious, fast flowing river through the along the uh, southern edge or the northern edge, I should say, of uh, Eugene. Plenty of fishermen on the river banks. I'm told it's not as clear, clo as uh, clean as some rivers, but it looks glorious, and there's plenty of people swimming in it. So I think it's uh, perhaps a relative term. I think by uh, the standards of most countries, it's a gloriously clean, healthy river. Now we can get a chance of the uh, view of the size of the gap there. You can see bottom left is the first pack. There's the chasing and pack, and I, if anything, I think they're closing on Demato. They are, yes. Through 8K, Tim, the leaders went through 25-57. That was a 3-14 split, and they had a lead of uh, 25 seconds over Demato, but she had a lead of only nine seconds over this group here with the other two Americans. Well, Emma Bates to the uh, right of picture. Ran a, a 10,000 earlier on this year in just outside 32 minutes. She ran was only 15th in New York Half Marathon in 71 minutes. So her racing in the short distances hasn't been quite as crisp as she might have liked. The uh, athlete born in Elk River. But 224 in Chicago last October was a, a fabulous result for her. Took her to a new level effectively. She's also run uh, very quickly over 10 miles, 52 minutes for 10 miles back in 2018, Emma Bates. So on a day, she's absolutely a world-class athlete. But this is like a, a battle for the minor places here. And I, I guess that must be ringing through their minds, Mara, that the fact that the, the medals have gone. I mean, it, it's very, very difficult. They've got to plug on and hope that maybe athletes peel off that front pack and start coming back to them. But the chances of them all... Peeling, peeling off and coming back to them <laughs> are very small. So this is the battle for <coughs> places in the top ten. Yeah, I think this is really good strategy for them. You know, Piasecki, personal best, 2.22. Uh, Hall's PB, 2.20. Bates, 2.24. You know, for them to go off at 2.16, 2.17 pace, I think is just overcooking it, despite the perfect conditions. So I think this is a good strategy. And as we were saying earlier, you know, one or two from that very fast lead group might suffer in the latter stages and they might be able to pick them up. So 29.12 through 9K and I make that another 3.15. So very consistent split so far. There's four in this lead group and then another Ethiopian, then the Eritrean and then Salpeta. But we're down to four at the moment and Ruth Chepin gets it has uh, not made what you would call a quick toilet break. I remember running a 10-mile race many, many years ago, Mara. So long ago, it was uh, black and white TV. In fact, everything was black and white. It was so long ago. But I remember running in a 10-mile race, and I was about 25 yards behind the guy, and he leapt off the road to have a, a quick toilet break. And I thought, great, I'm going to get past him. He was back on the road and running before I got to him. It took him about three seconds. Chepin Getich, I think, has taken... Something more like 30 seconds. Now, is that her? That's uh, Chemutai going through, I think. Is that uh, Immaculate Chemutai? And yeah, yeah, these are the chasers. This is behind the second group, isn't it? Gasabwa and Moscote. Yeah, Masuda is in 16th place. Masuda and Zhang, Zhang, the Chinese athlete. Now, Tim, up at the front, the last split was 3.05, the fastest by far. Uh, so that was when we saw Yashane inje injecting some pace. Well, that would explain it then. And the chasing pack were around 50 seconds behind the leaders through 19k. 62.27 at 19k. So they've gone from they've got the last three kilometres been 3.11, then a 3.23, and then that 3.05. Yes, the. Uh, Ethiopians absolutely knew what was going on. Gebres Lassi and Yeshene accelerating dramatically just to expose or rather rub salt into the wounds of, of uh, the damage done in time terms by Chep and Getic stepping off the course. Not only did she lose time because of having to make a toilet break, but the big acceleration from them will have lengthened that gap. 
And maybe... Korea has uh, gone with the two Ethiopians. Chep and Getic, by the way, we're hearing, has not gone through the 19-kilometer point. I'm beginning to wonder, Mara, whether or that is her race done. Yeah, sounds like it. And this leading group have even dropped Tanui, Angela Tanui. So I think this, this split, when we get it, is also going to be very fast. Meanwhile, uh, Salpeta, Weldu and Beccare, I think, are making chase. Yep, those three athletes now chasing this leading group. Well, can it be double goal for the Ethiopians after yesterday's uh, terrific run by Tola. Gebras Lassi and Yeshine through 20k, 65.36. So that is, uh, what, a, a 309? A 309, yep. That's a 20th kilometre. They've gone 305, 309. Those are the two uh, quickest kilometres of the race so far. There was a 310 through 5k. There was a 310 through 15k, but 305 and 309, they are rocketing around the middle section of this second lap. And uh, Tanui and Weldu and Sal Petter have had to let go, and that is a, a statement in itself. Sal Petter, so consistent, such a great racer, has had to let them go mid-race. And the 5k split, Tim, from 15 to 20k was 16.08. Oof. which is the fastest so far. The first 5K was 16.10. Well, Tanui getting a, a gel into her there. The sugars and salts, absolutely critical. Sarah Hall <laughs> raising the game, telling the crowd to keep on cheering loudly, working hard here. Now this could be one of those Sarah Hall charges. She's uh, renowned for finishing strongly. She's tough as nails, is Sarah Hall. Been around for a long, long time. Great track racer in her time. She is uh, 39 years old now. She says her preparation has gone as well as it could possibly have gone in recent months. And Sarah Hall with uh, the great half marathon in Houston kicking off her 2022 season and then a 222 for eighth place in Tokyo. A 70-minute uh, run in the New York half marathon and uh, more recently a really strong road 10K in New York. Has raced quite a lot this year and raced really well and she's feeling good by the looks of things. Yeah, great running by Sarah Hall in, in eighth place. Um, uh, six seconds ahead of Jess Piasecki in ninth. Kira D'Amato in tenth. A further 19 seconds back, followed by Emma Bates, nine seconds back again. And Matsuda of Japan now in twelfth place, some um, two and a half minutes behind the leaders. Well, Yeshine is, uh, what, 19 seconds down now behind the leading pair of Corio and Gebres Lassi at 29k. Tanui, just four seconds behind her. So this is a classic battle between Ethiopia and Kenya. Very, very little shade here, although it's a, it's not a warm morning. Still what, Mara? Probably about 15 degrees there out in the sunny patches. Yeah. 36, 38k there, 4k to go. So meanwhile, Tim, we're hearing that Tanui's last kilometre was 3.43, so she is slowing drastically and is in danger of being caught by Hall, currently in sixth place. Well, Hall is still moving really well. There is Tanui, who has been on her own for quite a time and is struggling, there's no doubt about that, having seen Salpeta uh, go past her. Along with Weldu, she's got to keep pushing on here. You never know in a marathon what's going to happen on the road up ahead of you. We saw Yashane come a cropper just uh, 10 minutes or so ago. Her race is run. We saw Chepin Getic, the champion, in the early stages of the uh, second lap, having to step off the road with evidently stomach problems. That uh, will be, we'll try to confirm for you. But Tanui here doesn't really have a 
realistic target on the road up ahead of her, and that's difficult, Mara. Yeah, she's very isolated. Looks like she's really struggling. Currently in fifth place, uh, but she's in danger of being caught. So back to the leaders, and Gabri Selassie and Korea locked together. And Korea unable to shake off the Ethiopian. Yeah, fascinating, isn't it? Gebre Slassi, much happier on the shoulder of Correa than right alongside her. Here is Salpeta pushing on hard. There's a real power to her leg turnover now. A longer stride and a, a quicker pitter patter motion to her cadence. Rhythm to her cadence, I should say. Well do in the background has hung on doggedly. It's been a fantastic run from the Eritrean, who has uh, never broken 220. Indeed, she's only just broken 222, but she's operating at a tempo quicker than that today. Here's Tanui back in fifth place. Now, she, we believe, is being caught by Sarah Hall. Wow, look at this. Gebrus Lassie, for the first time, coming down off that... Uh, Big hill, the one significant rise on this 14-kilometer circuit. It goes over I-5, the interstate uh, motorway in effect. The uh, downslope of it, she has kicked in, and Correa, it would appear, cannot respond in the way she would like. Gebre Lassie working very hard, but that gap, Mara, is not exactly becoming a yawning gap, is it? She's made a move. She's having to work really hard for every inch. Yeah, and just looking at their running actions, I think Gabby Salati is the stronger of the two, but still about to, just under 2K to run. She's got a good gap. She just needs to keep maintain that now. Once you get a gap like this, you've just got to keep working. And, of course, Korea has to be running much faster now to close that gap. I think we could be seeing the gold medal being decided right now by Gabby Salati. Only ran her debut last, last September in Berlin. And she bettered that time with a 2.18.18 in Tokyo this year to get third place. So this will be a massive title for the Ethiopian youngster, 27 years old. Well, yesterday Tamirat Tola stormed to a glorious gold in a very different fashion to this. He cut loose early in the final lap. Gebre Slassi here has uh, cut loose in the latter stages, almost within sniffing distance of the finish line. Two, of, two hours, 14 and a half minutes on the clock. And uh, she has just a very few minutes to go of hard running to stay clear of Correa, who has uh, worked so hard, led most of the uh, second half of this World Championship marathon. But the turnover rate of Gebrez Lassie here is fantastic. There's good length to her stride. She's running more like a middle distance runner here. I haven't seen a glance round yet to see what sort of damage she's done. I suppose if you think about it, she is giving 101%. So what's there to gain from turning around? You can't give any more than everything. And the gap there, as you can see, Gebrez Lassie near the top of the screen. Correa towards the bottom looks to be wilting the gap is about 35 meters and it's growing with every stride this looks like to be the completion of a glorious ethiopian double in the marathon distance the classic distance and she's managed a 310 tim for that last split through 41k so that's where she's done the damage and it looks like gebri salasi might have the gold medal sewn up korea still making chase Well, she had a little glance there. Four seconds, the gap then at 41k. But uh, Gotitom Gebres Lassie. Wow. And She's working so hard. Look at the grimace on her face there. And the mouth wide open, gasping in great breaths of oxygen. Another glance over her shoulder there. Nervous moments this for the uh, champion to be, surely. Here's the athlete in bronze medal position, Salpeta. What a run she has had. She's worked so hard for this, the 33-year-old Israeli. She had well do for company for many, many kilometers, way through the uh, second half of this race. And uh, she's had to be patient and keep working. And at last, she's broken the dogged resistance from the Eritrean to secure, surely, at least a bronze medal. 
Gebris Lassie here, pulling away still further, Mara, with every stride. Yeah, she looks great, doesn't she? She's got this sewn up, looks really strong, but Korea fighting back. And keep your eye on the clock, because 2.20.57 is the championship record held by Paula Radcliffe since 2005. Well, there it is, 400 metres to go. She won't be caught now. This is brilliant running from Gebres Lassie. She has waited and waited and waited for this moment. And then she has pounced and never gave career a chance to come back. Chalimo, Rose Chalimo, Bahrain won in London 2017. Ruth Chepengedic of Kenya in Doha 2019. Well, in Eugene 2022, it will be gold for Ethiopia. Mari Dibaba, their last gold medalist back in 2015 on the streets of Beijing. But now, within sight of the finish line, it is going to be the title for Ethiopia. And Gebres Lassie, Gotitum Gebres Lassie, surges towards the line. There's a real fatigue to that stride from the 27-year-old. 2.18 in Tokyo, 2.18.18, back on the 6th of March. She's going to be mighty close to that. It might even be a personal best to put icing on her cake. It will indeed. The tape beckons. Gotitum Gebres Lassie of Ethiopia is world champion here in Eugene and look at the time 2.18.11 it is indeed a championship record a fabulous silver for Korea of Kenya so close in the closing kilometers but when it came to it yet again it was the Ethiopian best which had the speed the closing pace to take the title Absolutely brilliant. Catherine Switzer there, an iconic figure in the history of women's distance running, putting the uh, flag, the Ethiopian flag, around the shoulders of Gotitum Gebres Lassie, Joan Benoit Samuelson as well, the inaugural Olympic champion in the marathon distance for uh, women, giving the champion a hug. But uh, Catherine Switzer, well, way, way back. She was the, the first registered female entrant for the Boston Marathon. And it was a, a pivotal moment for distance running Mara. Yeah, brilliant day, both under the championship record so far. And Sal Petter now coming up for a brilliant bronze. Well, Sal Petter being cheered on by these fabulous crowds in the last few hundred metres. She has worked so hard for this. The resistance from um, Weldu was so stubborn. I did wonder whether or not she'd ever get clear, but she did get away. They passed athletes with that battle between the pair of them. And uh, Salpeta here, heading for a bronze medal for which she so richly is uh, deserving. Well do in the background, still battling ways and never given up the Eritrean. But Lona Chemtai Salpeta puts another fabulous chapter into her career with this bronze medal. She has worked tirelessly for the second half of this race to chase down the leaders. She wasn't to catch the leading pair, but she has caught herself a bronze medal. Nazareth Weldu Eritrea, she comes home to a personal best by almost a minute and a half. Superb from the 32-year-old. Winner in Daegu earlier on this year. That was back in April. She finishes fourth as well do. And the celebration of Salpeta, they are so, so justified. Born in Kenya, went to Israel in 2008 as a nanny. And there will be many, many of her friends and family and uh, compatriots back in Israel punching the air. Salpeta takes bronze, 2.20.18. Absolutely superb. Gebras Lassi's official winning time, by the way, 2.18.11.